Hi there, I'm Chris King. I'm the game designer at Paradox Interactive, and I'm here to do a video dev diary in Hearts of Iron 3 for the Motherland. Today's subject is diplomacy and war goals. When, when, when looking at the diplomacy and war goal system, our, our, our goal, if you pardon the expression, was to change, was to, to, to look at the bits in Hearts of Iron 3 that weren't performing as well as it could do. And one of these was neutrality. The idea, the notion that countries just simply weren't ready to join World War II was solid, but our execution didn't quite get it right. There was exploits that people found out quite ruthlessly, and we also had problems like the USA joining the war far too early and things like this. So we're now going to reverse it. No longer is neutrality a value that you vary using spies. It's a fixed value that events and decisions might alter, but it's just a notion of how isolationist your country is, how bad things have to get before you join the war. Instead, we're going to look at enemy threat. How dangerous a world are you living in will be the trigger on which you start gearing up for war and you start joining the war. And this also allows us to then change the spy action. You're now looking at you know, doing the spy action on Germany to make them more threatening in order to bring you faster into the war which is then vulnerable to German counter-espionage, making it a far more balanced system. So the other part, of course, is war goals. One of the most unsatisfying parts of Hearts of Iron 3, according to our fans, is the peace system. We developed a peace system to try and cover the historical outcomes in World War II, and our biggest problem is it cannot cover every single eventuality that happens. So we end up with weird pieces, which our fans have let us know just aren't pleasing them at all. So we've gone back to first principle and thought about how can we get the historical outcomes in World War II without, you know, the strange outcomes we get. So we developed a war goal. So we've taken the war goal system from Victoria II to power the peace game or to power the, yeah. It also has a nice consequence that we can then rethink what the Axis actually is. The Axis powers were the have-nots, the bitter countries that felt that they didn't have their due in the world, you know, be it Hungary that was trying to overturn the verdict of World War I, Romania who had lost territory in the hands of the Soviet Union, or Finland who had lost parts of Karelia to the Soviet Union. So each of these countries essentially had territorial ambitions that only the Axis was going to give them. So we've now changed joining the Axis. It's not, it's not about neutrality, it's about territory. I mean, if you have a territorial war goal you want to fulfill, and you're also you know, not quite as neutral as you could be, then you can then ask the leader of the Axis, Germany, if they will satisfy your territorial demands. And if Germany says yes, then they, you will join the Axis faction. But you will not join the war until Germany goes to war with, the with a country that you put a territorial claim on. And you'll also not join an Axis war unless you're going to receive territory. So as I was saying earlier, the problem the, P the peace system in Hearts of Iron 3 had was that it couldn't cover all the eventualities that happened. As long as the, the, the way the events were scripted, as long as the war panned out fairly historically at the end, then the peace tended to give you what did happen. However, the game being what it is about changing history, that just just never happened. So we then, so we went, we thought and went, okay, we're now going to have definite peace goals in the way Victoria II did, ha, did have. So on German surrender, the Allies have, these countries are going to be freed, turned into Allied states. The Soviets say these countries will be freed, turned into communist states, etc. And then hopefully, everything will be covered. We've also got the, the great thing that we can also then go into more ahistoric possibilities because not only can you say, well, I want what I historically had, you can also say, well, no, actually, I think Romania should have a bigger slice of the Soviet Union or perhaps a bit of Yugoslavia. And we can actually have this ability for you to then place these markers down and for the Axis war leader to say, yeah, sure, you can have your little cut. So it will also free the player to have a more you know, dynamic experience, especially as a minor country. 
I mean, there's several examples we can show to demonstrate this. One example is the very specific German conquest of France, where Germany took a few small slices, Alsace and Lorraine, created a Vichy puppet in the south, and the north was under German military organized occupation. So we can, by scripting up this very specific historical war goal, we can have inside our very flexible system the ability for Germany to enforce a historical result in France. But with the way the system works, Germany is free to select alternative war goals. For example, territorial conquest, puppeting, making a fascist France. All those are available inside the game.